Guys, the standard is just too low. I, girl. Milana. Wow. Oh, I'm actually really impressed because I told myself that I wouldn't be intimate with someone unless they knew my middle name, so. Hey everybody, welcome back to Taste of Reality. We are reviewing Married at First Sight Season 12, Episode 5. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to try my best to not sound like a bitter woman, but just know I'm very upset. I'm very triggered. And honestly, my sympathy for Paige has diminished. It has, it has. But before I get ahead of myself, let's start at the beginning. As always, I'm gonna go from the least things that I have to say to the most things that I have to say. And I'm gonna start with Jacob and Haley. Jacob, God bless his heart. Jacob can't help but be unique. He just, it's just in his DNA. Do you like onions though? You ever just like, no. ate a bunch of onions? Like, no, no. Haley is putting on a brave face, trying to be like, you know what? I'm just gonna roll with the punches. They paired us for a reason. And initially I did think that he was taking up more time speaking about himself than he was getting to know about the situation. But the more you get into the episode, the more you see how Haley is letting her guard down. She's getting more comfortable with him. And I'm like, oh, okay. Thanks for dinner. We're the luckiest of lovers. She's allowing herself to let him in. And they even alluded to the fact that when the friends call, like he takes the time to get to know more about Haley vicariously through them. And I'm like, good for you. My worry was the interpersonal skills and the ability to get to know her, you know, but it seems to be working, so I'm happy for them. Next up, we have Virginia and Eric. These two, ironically enough, are so focused on everybody else's relationship when they're the ones who should really be examining their own. I'm really gonna need them to stop relating Virginia's drinking to her age because those two are not synonymous. I'm younger than her and I don't drink even half the amount that she does, so. So no. The fact of the matter is, regardless of how old you are, if you've chosen to make a commitment to be married legally, you're going to have to find a way to balance being young and wanting to have fun, life at the party, and also having the responsibilities of being a wife, a caretaker now, somebody who has to be cognizant of this whole other person who you've invited now into your life. So let's stop with the age thing. Yes, she's young, but she's also a wife. The mentality has to change. Now, one of Twitter's hottest topics have come into play. Can men and women truly be friends? Eric is now with it. That dude, no matter what, has probably thought about hooking up with you or like being with you. 100%. You cannot say 100%. I can. Listen, at the end of the day, the onus is on your partner on whether or not they're going to step out on you. Your partner could have all the guy friends in the world if she was a woman. All the guy friends in the world never cheat on you once. They could have absolutely none and be a serial cheater. Like it really has nothing to do with whether or not they have friends of the opposite sex. It's what are this person's morals? What is their communication style in where when things go wrong, are they going to lean on other people or are, gonna, are, or are they going to cleave to their spouse? So this topic Nip it in the bud, I'm done, it's, it's over. It, meh. no. Now on to Clara and Ryan. Clara and Ryan are kind of hitting this place to where they have to discover how their lifestyles are going to mesh. She's a flight attendant, she's very pick up and go. You never really know what her schedule is gonna look like. He is a more regimented person where he literally eats at the same time every single day. He sticks to a schedule. How is this gonna pan out in their relationship? They also go on to talk about children and even how they deal with household stuff. And I'm just like, what, where, who, how do we? Hmm. I want my kids to be able to discover other religions if they want to and like make sure that they don't feel like they're being forced to learn a certain way. I need to know the thought process behind putting them together because literally from their lifestyles it looks like they're going to run into a lot of issues and then when it comes to raising children i mean one person wants to raise their children in the church another person wants them to just do whatever that's not gonna mesh you don't need experts to know that so uh, 
this is so frustrating. This is so frustrating. Clara is really weary about um, raising their kids strictly religious because of her upbringing, which she has mentioned before. I understand her concern about bombarding children with religion and not really giving them that choice. However, he he's adamant on raising his children in Christianity. He has said that before the process, during the process, he's still going to say it after. So if she really wants to be, and I, and I know someone in the comments is going to be like, well, everybody has to compromise. It's up to everybody to be. Yes. Yes. Everybody has to compromise to some degree, but things like religion, it's easier to have somebody accept a religion than to have somebody denounce it. So unfortunately, Y'all can crucify me if you want to, but unfortunately in this circumstance, Clara's going to have to be the one to figure out whether or not she's willing to get on board or jump ship. With every scene, Ryan's stress vein grows more and more prominent. Like it is, it is on display. This man is stressed. Obviously the true test of their relationship will be when they're back at home and life has resumed to normal. Will they be able to reconcile their differences? I don't know. I think they like each other enough to make an honest effort, but they are dealing with probably one of the hardest things, you know? It might look like Paige and Chris have a really big thing because of the, you know, the child situation and all of that, but religion and raising kids this honestly might be the biggest issue. It really well could be, and we'll just have to see how that pans out. So I'm actually gonna move on to Paige and Chris. I wanted to end with them, but we'll do them now. So here are some things that I've learned about Chris. Chris is very dismissive, even down to the way he prays. <clears throat> All right, thank you for this food. Amen. All right is given the opportunity by Paige to bring up what is causing him distress and he doesn't want to. And then when he finally decides to, he does this. Not only did you drag her into the bathroom, you leave her in there to just process it on her own. Sir, you are now a husband. It is up to you to sit with her through this. Unless she asked you to leave her alone, that's a different situation, but I highly doubt that that's what happened. Be in there with her. Be in the treasures with this woman. You put her through this. Why, 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 why are you not in there? I, mm -mm, no. Paige and Chris sit down with Vincent and Brianna separately and Okay, I need clarification. Y'all in the comments let me know what you heard because this is what I heard. I heard Chris say they slept together night one, night two, and morning one. So that's three times. So she decided to continue having sex with a man who she knew was not attracted to her. He voiced that to her finally. This is where I'm starting to to lose a little bit of to lose a little bit of patience with with Paige because the first time you didn't know, now you know and you're still mm, I don't know, girl. I don't know. So back to this big announcement, um, Chris tells Vincent that the girl is six weeks pregnant and that even after their breakup they were intimate with each other and he says it's because she was going through some things i'm just here like okay i have personally applied for reality television before i was in the process for four months four months mind you they're still doing the process right now that was just four months of like the part that i was involved in mind you this is not a show about marriage so on a show about marriage, you've probably been through this minimum four months as well. And then for you to make it seem like you can just do whatever you want willy nilly or whatever. And like, I don't know, I find it very hard to believe that he didn't know he was going to be chosen for this process. And yeah, I'm just grimy by the day he just gets more grimy by the day 
So in all of the hullabaloo, yes, I said hullabaloo, Paige, Paige even asks, how is the girl? How is she? You're better women than me. They later go on to talk about whether or not he has intentions of getting back with her or if he's still in love with her. Dismisses the whole question. Didn't even answer it, didn't touch on it, completely said something unrelated. Right now, it doesn't matter if she's pregnant or not. You're my wife, nobody comes before you. So it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying, what is going on with that. One last thing I've learned about him and his family, they love to button things up with compliments. All of a sudden it's, oh, but you're such a nice girl, you're a great girl, you're intelligent, you're smart, you're beautiful, I've grown attracted to you, all these things. And I'm just like, so does that nullify all the things that you've put me through in three days of our marriage? Because guys, like getting past the pregnancy, he has manipulative behavior. He has very narcissistic behavior. And the pregnancy is just a cherry on top of it all. It, it is not nowhere near the biggest issues that they have. <laughs> Jesus, be a fence all around them every day because they gonna need it. You hear me? They're gonna need it. Last but not least, Brianna and Vincent. These two have been married for five months. They, they are far ahead of everybody. I, I love them. Daddies. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hey, babe. How are you? Fine. You just have to. I literally have not an ill thing to say. An ill thing? we're going with it, to say about these two. They are so sweet, they're so genuine, they're so open to the process, willing to fully immerse themselves into it. Like, it helps, of course, that the odds were stacked in their favor, but there's been times too when odds have been stacked in people's favor and they and it, it didn't work out. So these two, they're giving me hope. They're keeping hope alive. And also, this is an aside, to the producers of Married at First Sight, clearly you can see that a love story that is genuine, pure, and with the right intentions can thrive. There's absolutely no need to bring unnecessary drama for the sake of what, ratings? For the sake of being, I don't, I don't know, being like a talked about show, like I don't understand the reasoning for bringing Chris on the show, but it's not necessary. You know, like I watch Rihanna and Vincent and I'm genuinely entertained. I'm genuinely like enthralled with them. It, it gives me so much joy. The drama is not necessary. All right, so at the end of the episode, all the couples are coming together, sharing their experiences so far. Clara is a whole me. I think she wants this so badly that she's sticking with it. Stockholm syndrome. This man, Chris, has the audacity to be upset with everybody for being so supportive of Paige and maybe disregarding him to the side. Um, sir, you've put her in this situation. Like, it's kind of hard to sympathize with you. Anyways, he decides to leave the group, not because of what's happening to him right now. He leaves because, oh, Jesus. Okay, I just, okay. He leaves because he sees how everybody has found what they've wanted on paper and he hasn't. The grooms are like, hey, we got the type of woman that we described that we wanted. So I felt bad that everybody else was happy and Paige wasn't happy and neither was I happy. I don't want to break down in front of everybody. <laughs> I just, I might be praying. I'm going to be praying for you. For real, because I just, I, I, you got a special one, a real special one. Low key, Virginia was asking questions that I would have asked. Yes, the timing was very insensitive. However, I mean, how do you really know that he's, this, this baby's yours? I mean. Yeah, she's pregnant. Yeah, so. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, 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 so. Okay. It's like, it's for he, sure yeah. yours? <laughs> You ain't really fully know. And yeah, the, she was out of pocket. She was, but I get why she asked those questions. Clearly the tension between that couple and Paige and Chris erupt in next week's episode, which we're gonna have to wait and see where it really starts to pop off. But you could tell 
Eric has kind of not been on Chris's side for a long time, so it probably wouldn't have taken much to get him to escalate the situation, no matter what the problem was. He could have said something about, who knows, Brianna, and he would have found a problem with Chris. You know, he's always been on that agenda. Anyways, that has been this episode of Taste of Reality, reviewing Married at First Sight. Guys, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you are notified when I post. Share this video with a friend and I'll catch you guys next week for another review.